Hey, welcome back to another video. I'm Ivan Calderon, and today we are making a beat. Alright, so let's break this beat down. Now, with Bad Bunny, you can go one of two ways, either trap or reggaeton. I decided to do trap for this beat, so let's go ahead and see what I did. Now, I started this beat out with a pad. Now, let me show you how it sounds before any effects are added. And then I'll show you what I added to make it what it turned out to be. Now, I am in the key of C minor. The, the BPM is 115, and these are the chords that I decided to play. And it just kind of repeats. Now, I knew that I wanted the pad to be not only a background piece, but also supplement the rhythmic section. I knew that I wanted to add some sort of modulation. So the first thing that I did was I added an EQ to create this kind of like bell curve mountain looking thing. I cut off everything above 2K and everything below 200. And then it sounded like this. Now from there I added a tremulator to add that modulation that I wanted to add that bounce and it is set to 1 8 on the rhythmic section so now that pad sounds like this. One of the biggest elements in trap is bounce and you can add that with the drums which is probably the most common way but you could also add it with melodic instruments just like you saw me do here so again these two things turned my pad into not only a background foundation piece to kind of fill things in but also gave it some bounce to add it to the rhythmic section the next sound that we added was a pluck or kind of like a stab i didn't know what to call it so i just named it pluck but essentially i'm playing the same chords from the pad and the only difference is that on the last chord i split it in half i played it twice to add more of like an accentuation so together they sound like this Now, as far as the the effects for that pluck for the stabs, we have some fab filter again, so the EQ, and we're doing this, kind of the same thing to the pad. We're just kind of muffling it a little bit. So And then we added an echo boy, which is set to a quarter note delay. So with everything. Thank you. 
after those two things were set, I moved on to the drums. And if I'm being completely honest, this beat is not that difficult. It has three sounds and two MIDI patterns because the pluck and the pad have the same pattern. And then of course the lead has a different one, which we'll talk about in a minute, but three sounds, two MIDI patterns. So when you have something like this, which is very common in trap, you want to make sure your drums are the ones that kind of pull in that weight and make the beat really interesting. Now, the first drum piece that I added was a closed hat. Now, when I first recorded the closed hat, I recorded it like I always do into my machine. And this is the original file here. Now, when I first recorded it, I just recorded um, same pitch notes and I did a bunch of eighth notes, 32nd and 16th notes. And that sounds like this. Now, another common feature or element in trap is to pitch your snares. Now, because of the way that I have my machine set up, I can't do that in this instance or in machine itself, really. So what I did was I brought in a sample one, imported that same hi-hat, and then here, because it's spread across the keyboard, I can do whatever I want to it. So from here, I pitched a couple down, a couple up, and then now my hi-hats sound like this. Now, another thing that I want you guys to notice real quick, and let me pull up the original file because it'll be easier to hear on that one, is that on the parts where I play 16th notes, so here, here, I lowered the velocity of certain hi-hat hits to about 75% because again, that further adds to the bounce. So if I were to take this and I bring it to 100, this is what this sounds like. Very monotone, very boring. And if we bring the middle one down to about 50 to 75%, we get a little bit more accent, a little bit more, I guess, flavor, if you will. So again, once we play the hi-hats that we actually ended up with, the pitch ones, this is what we get. From there, we moved on to the snare and the open hat. And the snare is playing on, let's see, on every, because it's trap and we're in double time, it plays on every three. and then the open hat right after it on every other snare. Another cool little trick which you can do that is really effective in trap and that everybody does, but again, it just adds to the vibe, is you can add some rolls right before the snare hit. So if I bring up my snare and bring up, let's see, my close hat, you can see that right before the snare, we have the hi-hat rolls. So it kind of gives this feeling of like ascension, of, of like a buildup. So we get this. And again. So that just repeats, but again, it just kind of adds this feeling of, of buildup, which is really nice. Next, we had the kick and the crash. The crash, nothing crazy, just again, introduces the whole thing. And then the kick, this is the pattern that we had. Moving on to the 808. Now the 808 in trap can be all kinds of different things and they all sound really good. You can do crazy like bass slides, which sound really modern and, and really cool, or you can do something more subtle, which is what I opted for. Now my 808, this is the sound that I had. Now I followed, obviously we're still in key, um, and I followed the same root notes that I'm playing in the chords and I just chopped up the second and the last one into two to kind of add more of an impact, if you will. So now all the drums sound like this. And when we add the, the pluck or stab and the pad, Finally, the last piece was the lead. Now, the lead, I believe I got it yep, from Silent, and this is what it is. And then in the context of everything, and the final beat.
But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, if you like the beat, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, but I will see you on the next one.